remember when the only thing we were talking about was the offensive line? Well, we're back to that. They're back to that. And now it's just a matter of figuring out, A, what's wrong, and B, what to do about it. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Your football team was back on the field practicing yesterday over on the south side. I went over there myself to just kind of see how things are going. Not so much on the field, but more off the field. How the players are reacting to the opportunity that gets presented with a bye week to reset, uh, to recalibrate both physically and mentally, but also, you know, the kind of important task of playing the final nine games in this case. And the guys that I focused on, predictably, were the offensive linemen. I'm kind of into this, and it's kind of important for this franchise. They need to find out what they have, whether they can trust the players that they have, whether they can trust the coaching that they have in Pat Meyer. And it, it's just a it's a it's a tough, tough read right about now. Uh, these guys acknowledge that they can be better. They acknowledge that there are some ugly mental mistakes that they're making. But then when it comes to talking about what it is that's that's wrong and how it can be addressed, every last one of them in my talks with them yesterday used the word accountability, which sounds great. You know, what does accountability sound like when I say it to you? Fire Matt Canada, fire Mike Tomlin. That's what we think of when we think of accountability or even at the player level, losing a starting job. But they don't have other players to put in those jobs. They just don't. Look at the depth chart on the O-line. Tell me which player you would plug in for someone that you'd take out. Go ahead and take Dan Moore off a left tackle and tell me who you would trust out of who's here to protect Kenny Pickett's blind side. Take Kevin Dotson out. Tell me who you'd plug in. See? <laughs> so the, the goal here at least for the remainder of the 2022 season, needs to be for them to get better, for them to keep working to become a more cohesive unit. So what does this accountability thing mean? After Mason Cole had used the word with me, I responded with exactly that. Yeah, I think I think offensively we're just uh, looking for an answer. Right? We've been doing the same thing and just haven't, haven't had success. So trying to do whatever it takes to, to win, whether it's uh, schematically changing, philosophically changing, whatever it is, uh, we're looking for those answers. And um, I think we had a good bye week and a good understanding of what, what our goals are for the rest of the year. And um, I think we're going to hold ourselves more accountable. And um, coach are going to hold us more accountable. And um, what's that mean? I just think Everyone when interprets that all kinds of different ways. Yeah, I think for us offensively, just when, when guys aren't doing the right things, um, they got to be held accountable. Um, I think we've had way too much of that in our offense the first eight weeks, and um, so having that change is huge for us. Did you get that? I, I mean, I, I I didn't really, to be honest with you. And and in the moment, I guess there's a you know 700 follow ups that I could ask or whatever. But there's also a, a line between what they're going to be willing to tell you and what they aren't going to be willing to tell you. But it wasn't a whole lot clearer with anybody else, so I'm not sure that it's all that clear to begin with. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect, rigor, relevance. That's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. If your offensive line leads the National Football League in illegal man downfield penalties, and the Steelers actually do, then the simplest form of accountability would be to say, hey, if you make another mistake like that, we're, you're just going to sit. We will put John LeGlue out there. We will put J.C. Hassenauer out there. We'll do that. 
because we can't afford to have these penalties that knock you back time and time again within an offense that has a very hard time gaining positive yardage. And I'll ask another question right here to this whole scene, and that's this. If they're asking the players for accountability now, what the hell was in there before? You know what I mean? Like, what exactly was the vacancy? Were players not being properly admonished or instructed as it relates to illegal man downfield or holding or whatever else you have, and they get all kinds of penalties? Were they not being taught the position well enough to have learned how to play it without having all kinds of adjustments? I, I It only gets more confusing. I, I went to Kevin Dotson out of you know this whole group that I that I talked with and Dotson had this to say to me as it related to what the line needs to do in order to be more competitive we've talked to our coaches and they made it clear now that you know the coaches are going to do we're going to do exactly what the coaches say and we'll go off of if we give 100 percent on what the coaches say then we'll be good um like we, I think we were doing too much as as players, you know, playing too much outside of our helmets. So I mean, like we think about stuff that the, the coaches should be thinking about. Now, see, that's another wrinkle right there. The coaches want to apparently simplify the playbook, clarify what exact goal they hope each player achieves on each play, without having them worry on the field about strategy this and sliding over to help this guy and whatever else. That makes sense. I was advocating for that, not just last summer, but the summer before that, when they knew they were going to have a young group. I kept saying, whether it was Meyer in charge or whether it was Adrian Clem, you needed to have the simplest possible playbook. You needed to have in place Pretty much the same system that was there going back a couple of years ago when Dotson filled in for Matt Filer at left guard. Remember this? And was just knocking people backward. And we all thought, whoa, Kevin Dotson. Yeah, he's the future. We don't even want Filer back. Remember that? Filer was gone for five games and we were happy for all five of them. And Filer was actually pretty good. That's how excited we were about Dotson. Why? He was given one assignment. See that guy in front of you? Knock him backward. Dotson is a big, strong, athletic dude. Let him do what he does. No, we had to see all kinds of gadgetry and sweeps and everything else for a line that couldn't handle it, for a line that hadn't played together, for a line that didn't have a chance through a single training camp and a couple preseason games, parts of a couple preseason games, to get used to each other. So we saw two or three games in the regular season of complete train wreck, and then they started to get a little bit better, and now they've gotten exposed a bit again. Just just let them play football. Come up with a play. Draw it right there in front of them on the chalkboard, and just put one number under it. 69, Dotson. See this guy over here? You go and get him. If he's not there for whatever reason, if he drops back into coverage, then you go over here. The end. Next, 65 more. That's what you do. That's what you do. And that would have made a very, very big difference this season. I don't know who's singularly to blame for this. I don't know if it's Meyer. I I don't believe that. I don't know that it's just the coordinator because everything does stop with the head coach. When the head coach saw that the O-line was in trouble, instead of just bearing down and getting mean with them... What he could have done is exactly what we're talking about now. I, I, ah, when we come back, J1Q. Mike's Beer Bar. They're located directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. They are the one, the only, the premier destination in Pittsburgh for craft beer. More than 500 
craft beers available, more than 350 of those local, and more than 80 of those on tap. Mike's can't be topped, not for beer, not for the awesome kitchen and menu that's available, not for all the special events that are going on there. Check them out online at mikesbeerbar.com. Mike's Beer Bar, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. And today's J1Q comes from Randy Waddell in Boston. And Randy says, DK, how do I go about reconciling what the heart wants, a Steelers win every time they take the field, with the knowledge that every additional loss brings them that much closer to procuring a true difference maker in the upcoming draft. Randy, no! Everybody who's thinking this way, no! No, 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 no! The Steelers are not going to make the playoffs, okay? Let's start with that. That means they're guaranteed to have a pick pretty much in the upper half, and probably even a little bit higher. So the difference maker that you think might be available to you probably is anyway. Unless you're going first overall or top three, chances are the player that you want is going to be there. I don't know how else to put this. There are so many people who look at the draft predictions the countless, countless mock drafts and think of them as gospel. And then when another team takes somebody who all of the draft Knicks had at 12th or 13th and they take them in the top five, the first thing that fans do is freak out. Oh, it's a reach. They reached. They could have traded down. They could have done this. They could have. The people who are predicting the draft, the brightest conceivable minds predicting the draft, don't have even a tiny millifraction of the information that the worst of the NFL's evaluators have. I I can't make this point any more strongly, and you're going to hear it a lot between now and next May. Because the worst drafting team in football, like think of the Browns a few years ago, they still have access to infinitely more information than any Mel Kuyper or Mel Kuyper successor out there. They just do for a zillion reasons. Doesn't mean that they're smarter. Doesn't mean that they'll get them right. But they have access to more information, not just what's available on film, but also as it relates to character and so forth. There's tons and tons and tons of it that never becomes public. As a result, the order of the draft is never, ever, ever correctly predicted by anyone. So if you're in the low teens or the 11s or 12s or wherever it is that the Steelers might end up, they're going to get their guy. Add on to that that the Steelers are not, I don't believe anyway, going to draft a quarterback. That'd be weird. And they're not going to draft a running back. That'd be psychotic. So a couple of the more, especially quarterback, obviously, running backs in the first round aren't much of a thing anymore, unless it's a you know Saquon Barkley type. But that takes off the table picks that they wouldn't make anyway. You're going to see a quarterback or two or three or four go before the Steelers turn. So they really have a good chance of getting their guy anyway. In the interim, Randy and everybody, it is so much more important for this football team to improve, to show general improvement, to show individual improvement. Why do you think I'm focused so much on the offensive line, particularly the left side? The reason is if Dan Moore and or Kevin Dotson shows well, For the remainder of this season, if we stop talking about them as if they're already busts, if they straighten themselves out, that's a heck of a thing for this franchise, because then it means you don't have to go and draft somebody. I know, I know, I know, I know you still want to and everything else, but hear me out here. The more of these holes, these apparent holes that are in place right now can be filled, the more comfortable the draft process can be, meaning you actually just go and get the best player regardless of position. 
And from there, the more realistic the free agency process can be. Because now, again, instead of looking at seven or eight vacancies, you might just be looking at four or five. If only a couple of guys step up over these last nine games, it's going to be worth so much more to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2023 than anything, anything that could happen in the draft. Oh, we've got to bury this one, people. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We will do another one of these tomorrow. 